creep night. Sure to send a chill down your spine. Welcome to Creep Night. We're going to do something special this Halloween. We're going to do multiple stories. And I hope you trick-or-treaters out there have a nice, scary Halloween. And I hope it sends a chill down your spine. <laughs> In episode one, we're gonna advise you not to drink the potion. <laughs> I wanted to get even so badly at my best friend that when I invited her to a certain Halloween party, I didn't tell her. Don't drink the potion. Do you know why I didn't advise her? Because I wanted to see how much she would suffer. Anyways, my friend Alexa came to my Halloween party. She was all decked out, ready to go, have fun, go lucky me. Rub it in my face, why don't you? Well, I was going to show her. I was going to show her real good, just how good I could be. And when she did arrive, she waltzed in like she owned the place. Who did she think she was walking into my home like she was queen of the castle? Oh, I could feel my temper rise, but I held back because my mother always told me a dish cold is the best revenge. I walked into the kitchen and I quickly grabbed the materials that I would need. I began pouring them into a cauldron. I stared and steered and steered all my anger into that potion. I continued until my fingers throbbed. And well after, I couldn't feel my hands anymore. That is when I knew it had been complete. And I would serve her this drink on ice, all right. Oh, I would indeed, because I would enjoy to see her suffer. I walked out of the kitchen like nothing was wrong. I put a giant smile on my face and I looked at her and I asked, How are you doing, Alexa? And she replied, I'm doing good. With such snootiness that I gave her her drink and I smiled when she took her first sip. Hmm, this is pretty good. What'd you put in it? I didn't tell her what I put in it, but I will tell you. <laughs> I hope that she enjoys her little bathroom trips, because it will be the last thing she'll do. Thirty minutes went by. Still nothing had happened just yet, until she took another sip. She started complaining that her stomach hurt, and how she was getting this throbbing headache. And then she got up, and she walked into the bathroom and collapsed. I laughed. <laughs> I drug her all the way into the bathroom and placed her in the tub where she would spend all of her while. And when she finally woke up, <laughs> she could see me staring back at her, looking at her and telling her, is it all worth it now? Are you better than me now? Can you see me now, Alexa? She glanced up at me with such pitiful eyes and replied, What are you doing? I've never done anything to you. Let me out of here. What did you do to me? And I glanced at her and I said this, well, dear Alexa, pretty soon you're going to be nothing but a little blob of liquid. And when that happens, guess what's going to happen to you? Guess, my little friend, guess. I'm going to use your liquid, all right? I am going to enjoy using your liquid. I'm going to put them all in my potions. And when I get customers, guess what's going to happen? I'm going to use your liquid in them so I can get rid of your evidence of existence in this world. And no one will be any of the wiser. <laughs> she continued to stare at me with fright. And it was in that moment that she splashed her liquid water at me. And I began to melt and you could hear me going, Aah! 
no. And that is what happened to me, a beautiful, delicate witch who was betrayed by her best friend. Thank you for listening to this episode of part one of Halloween special. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. Now we're going on to the second story of this special episode. So stay tuned, boys and girls, because we have a special edition. <laughs> I hope your Halloween is going creepy. Great night. Sure to send a chill down your spine. Welcome to Creep Night. In this episode, we're going to meet a man with an umbrella. I've been walking home from work. I usually do not like to walk home at night, but I had gotten off of work really late. It had been raining. I began to feel this very eerie feeling, you know, that feeling you get when someone is watching you or following you. I kept hearing leaves crunch behind me. The feeling began to make my skin crawl and I began to walk faster. As my heart began to race, I could see in the corner of my eye a shadow of a man in a silhouette of an umbrella being popped open. The water splattered across his bright red eyes. I gasped in horror. <gasps> At this point in time, I began to run as fast as I could, but it seemed no matter how fast I ran, the man with the umbrella caught up with my speed. I began to panic, since there was nothing really around to run and hide. I could feel the man's eyes burning into the back of my head. I could feel the man with the umbrella getting closer to me. As I ran with all my might, the hairs on the back of my neck began to stand up. I ran as fast as my feet would carry me until there was nowhere else to run. I relaxed when I did not hear the footsteps and the crunching of the leaves anymore, thinking I had lost the man with the umbrella. Until I turned around, his bright red eyes looked into mine. His bright white sharp teeth glowed at me, as if in means to swallow me up whole. My eyes widened as I stared at him in panic. As the man with the umbrella walked closer to me, he smiled wide. His eyes were widened, so wide he began to resemble something that looked so familiar to me, something that was uncannily deniable that it couldn't be possible. It shouldn't have been possible. How could it be possible? I thought to myself, and in a minute of time, as he grew closer to me, and I stared him face to face in the eyes, I could see me! Well, boys and girls, it looks like there's nothing to fear except yourselves. <laughs> Our third story, we're going to learn that the dead don't talk. And pay attention, boys and girls, because this one might just save your life. My mother had always warned me, stay out of the cemetery. Whatever you do, stay out of the cemetery. I asked my mother why she wanted me to stay out of the cemetery so bad. She had told me that there had been a military experiment back in the 50s that had somehow raised the dead. Like in the movie Night of the Living Dead. And I wasn't taking this seriously. Because it didn't seem like something like that could ever really happen. Come on, they're dead. Do you really think they're going to climb out of their graves after being dead for centuries? <laughs> to me, it was just a joke. So when my friend Alexa and Cecilia came over, we decided we were going to go to the cemetery against my mother's wishes. We waited until midnight. Because this way, my mother would be fast asleep. And I grabbed a flashlight and we headed out the front door. On our way there, we noticed that there was a lot of fog, but this wasn't out of the ordinary. This was natural, so I shrugged it off. We reached the entrance to the cemetery and quickly got inside, which wasn't hard to do since there was no lock on the gate. There was no time frame for when you had to be out of the cemetery anyways, and who was going to pay attention? It was Halloween. 
No one really cared. The grass was long. The trees looked creepy, I'll grant you that. We began to walk around and look at all the tombstones. Some of them looked really, really old. I mean, I looked at a name called Dan, and I didn't see anything out of the ordinary. No one popping up out of their graves. No one dancing on the moonlight. So I ignored it and continued on until we got into a crypt. I've never been in a crypt, and if you haven't either, it is a little creepy, I will tell you that. I mean, there's a big door that looks like a little shed outside. And when you get in, there's all these little plaques, and the floor looks like marble. And there's a tiny little window, which I never really understood, because why would there be a window for someone to peer in or out? No one's going to come out here. No one. Cecilia looked at me and said, I really don't think we should be doing this. And Alexa kind of nodded in agreement. But she wasn't going to show that she was scared. Neither was I. I was not backing down from finding out why this place was so creepy on Halloween night. It seemed like a normal place. No different than anywhere else. That was until we heard something. Almost like a muffling voice. And we couldn't pinpoint where it was coming from. All I could hear was, But that was it. I looked around and tried to figure out where it was coming from, but I couldn't, so I ignored it. And we continued to walk around and look at all the plaques in the room. When we grew tired of the crypt, we began to walk onto the the grounds. And we walked up to a tombstone called Gwen. And I stopped there for a second because I felt this connection. Like she wanted me to sit there and talk to her. So I sat down. Alexa and Cecilia sat down with me too. We had noticed this weird sensation and I reached up to touch the tombstone. And when I did, I felt something, almost like something was wanting me to reach down, down into the flower pot, deep down. I placed my hand into the flower pot and I didn't feel anything, nothing out of the ordinary. So I pulled my hand out and I said, this is getting real creepy, guys. <laughs> Alexa looked at me and she goes, Um, yeah, I don't uh, really think we should be here anymore. I'm getting this vibe that something extremely bad is going to happen. Cecilia looked at me too, and she nodded in agreement. I was not going to be scared out of my mind and run back home and ignore this. No, not me, because I'm not a chicken. I have to face this head on. So I just shrugged them off and said, come on. I sat there again, staring at the tombstone, wondering, wondering what kind of life this person had had. And then it came to me. Something eerie happened next. I could feel the ground move. And when the ground moved, I jumped up. Alexa and Cecilia had been staring at me. And they looked at the ground too. They had noticed it had been moving. And I looked at them and I said, it's probably just an animal. But I was wrong. I was dead, dead wrong. Because what happened next was the scariest moment in my life. Because when the ground started to part, I could see this corpse rising out of its grave. And it had a smile on. And it looked at me and said, I knew you'd come. In her raspy voice, she picked herself up off the ground and continued to stare at me, and she pointed to the next grave over. And pretty soon, you too will be here with me. Alexa looked at me in fright, and she ran off. Cecilia ran in the other direction, and I just stood there in fright. I couldn't move my legs, because they just were in terrible shape of fright. And the lady looked at me again, and said, Soon, all of you will be. And 
And at that moment, the ground began to open and I fell into the dirt. And it was at that moment that I realized I too am dead. Well, trick-or-treaters, wasn't that a scary story? <laughs> Hopefully next time your parents warn you of something, maybe, just maybe, you'll listen to them. <laughs> Before we head to our next story, I just want to shout out a happy Halloween to all you boys and girls and hope that your Halloween is staying extra scary. As you recall last year, there was a human in my closet, and no one believed me, and it was pretty scary when I saw him. And uh, so when I went to school, and I told all my monster friends, they laughed at me. They said I was just being silly. <sighs> what did I remind you? I'm just a little monster. I don't really scare humans because they don't exist. Well, apparently, that is what I was told. So what I decided to do was wait. This year, I would get that human. And I would prove to all my monster friends that humans do indeed exist. I stayed up all night. After I planted a net outside of my closet door, I would wait until the human would knock again and see if I could lure the thing out of there. I sat up on my bed and waited. I waited until midnight happened. And that is when the knocking began. I slowly made my way over to the door. I opened it. I didn't see anything like I didn't last year at first. So I closed the door and walked over to my bed again, thinking, how can I get this human to come out of the closet? I thought long and hard. But then I realized, if he had been in the closet for so long, wouldn't he be hungry? So at this point, I got up and I went into the kitchen and grabbed myself a plate. I made a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And then I walked back into my room. And I set the plate in the net and waited for the creature to knock again. And when he did knock, I opened the door and walked away. I could see the furry like creature stepping out of the closet door. He indeed was a human being. He looked at the plate and lifted it, and that is when the net snapped shut on top of him. He started shouting unbelievable things at me. Let me go, you darn little... Monster creature, you! You can't keep me in this net! I looked at him, puzzled and confused, and I called out for my mom, but she did not come. I looked at him, and he looked at me. <laughs> Your parents aren't going to come, and do you want to know why they're not going to come? And I slowly nodded yes, because at this point, I was very scared. Your parents aren't going to come because I ate them. You see, I don't eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I eat monsters like you. I ran out of the room and I got to the phone. I dialed the police. The police informed me to leave the house immediately because if this human had gotten out of that net, I surely too would be eaten. And it turns out they had been looking for this creature, this human being, because he was in connection to eating other species. They ran out of the house to a neighbor's house. But as you can tell, the net in the other room snapped. And I saw the furry 
human like creature jump out of the window and down the street. And ever since, no one has ever caught the human being. Wasn't that a creepy little story? How would you feel if you were on the dinner menu? <laughs> I also want to remind all the little boys and girls to have a safe but scary Halloween. Remember to check all your candy before you eat it. Now moving on to our next story. <laughs> As you recall, in the episode Jennifer the Shrinking Girl, things did not go very well for her. We're going to meet... Madame Cecile's next client and see if anything pans out for them. <laughs> a lot of people have a lot of wishes in this world and one of mine was always to be wealthy. So I decided I was going to try everything in my books to become wealthy. And part of my job as a debt collector is to get that money. And I don't let anyone stand in my way. If it's too good to be true, <laughs> I usually don't take it. But this one, I had heard from a friend of a friend that a certain person could help me with this problem. They had mentioned the name Madame Cecile. They gave me the address of where this lady lived. And maybe, just maybe, she could help me. I reached this lady's place. It was average. And I began to think, well, how is this lady going to help me get millions of dollars when she lives in a shack? I opened the door and I stepped in. I wasn't too fond of this moment, but I gazed into her eyes and I told her what I wished for. And what did she say? Now, dearie, you have to give me something in return to cast your spell. I grew quite annoyed with this. Why should I have to give her anything? Anyways, she asked me for something real silly. In your pocket, dear. Hand me a little piece of lint. I looked at her and I was really dumbfounded. Lint? That's all I had to give you? I should just give you all the lint that I have in my dryer. If that's what you want. She walked into the other room and started doing something. I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. She came back out a few minutes later with this little bottle that looked pink. Now, dear, what I want you to do is put a drop on your hand. And when you do, money will come for you. I rolled my eyes, I took the bottle, and I went home, thinking I had been scammed. Wasn't it my job to scam people? Not the other way around. Anyways, I put a drop on my hand. And the next thing I knew, I got a check for $15,000, which was great. And then something weird happened. My uncle died, and I inherited $20,000, which is not a lot of money. I added another drop to my palm extremely disappointed with how much money was coming in. I expected that after the first drop, I'd get like millions of dollars, not little chum money. And after I did the second drop, well, something interesting happened. My job called. I got a promotion. This time, I'd be making 15,000 K, more than what I was making already. This still wasn't enough for me, so I added five more drops. And maybe I shouldn't have done that, but I didn't care. As long as it brought me money, then I didn't care what the consequences would be. Anyways, a week later, I had some misfortunes happen. Next thing you know, I have to go bankrupt. And this annoyed me so much that I went back to Madame Cecile. Well, dearie, I see that my potion is working a great deal. Yeah, until I lost money. Well, how many drops did you do? All together, I probably did ten drops. She looked at me puzzled. Then she said, mm, 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 mm. My, oh my, what a greedy one you are. Well, I hate to do this to you, but there is a way I can reverse it. But you will have to give me 
one of your teeth. A tooth? Are you kidding me? I'm not, how am I going to get one of my teeth out? Well, if you want me to help you, you must bring me one of your teeth. I looked at her annoyed, because now it meant that I had to rip out a tooth out of my mouth. But I guess it was worth it, because if I got millions, I wouldn't have to worry about that. I went home, grabbed a pair of pliers, and started pulling out one of my teeth in the back. And the next day I went to her, and I gave her the dang tooth. Here, take it. Now make me rich. She looked at me. Well, my oh my, it's going to take a little bit of time. You'll have to sit over there and wait. Wait? Did she not know who she's talking to? I don't want to wait. But I sat down anyways, annoyed, and she went into the back room. This time, she came back out with a black bottle of something. I don't know what was in it, but she handed it to me, and she said, Deary, now do me a favor and take this bottle and drink it. Only one sip. So I went home. I took one sip of the bottle, and it seemed like everything was spinning out of control. Like something was happening to me. I felt lucky in some way. But when I looked in the mirror, I started to turn green. I was so angry, I slammed the bottle down and ran back to her. And I demanded to know what she was going to do about this. Oh, Derry, you see, there is nothing I can do about your greed. But I can do this. And as soon as I turned around, a giant basket came flinging forward to me. Now that I have done your deeds, I do, however, have a need for you, since you won't be able to go out in public looking like that. You are now going to be stuck with me! <laughs> and now I remain in this basket with Jennifer, the shrinking girl. Oh my, oh my, boys and girls, what a sad, greedy story. But I hope that it teaches you all one very important lesson. When it comes to greed, you might just turn green. <laughs> I just want to remind you, boys and girls, to have a happy, safe, but scary Halloween. I want to thank you all for listening to Creep Night, sponsored by Anchor.fm.